Hey and welcome to another video. Uh, today's been kind of my day off. It's when I, I do stuff with the kids, so we go swimming and uh, and do some fun stuff. So I'm actually heading to the office now, which is this afternoon, or even this evening. It's probably dinner time, somewhere in the world. And I thought I'd just, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the drive in. So I've got the M3, we get a bit of a cold start going. Open the valves. Oh, sounds so good. A little bit of tire slap. <laughs> sounds so good. Alright, so we just drive into the office to the workshop and it's not the best or the most flattering angle <laughs> but it will work and the car's just warm so ah oh, the brakes are so good thanks Jace thank you for your help my friend so yeah we had a little bit of a different video. Should do another little pull. So I wonder, I wonder how you've been liking these vlogs, are they, is, is it good kind of having the crypto education side of things, you know, mixed up with what's going on in my life, you know, is that just completely boring? Let me know in the comments section below, um, and for those of you who are commenting and giving me feedback and messaging me, I really appreciate it, thank you so much. It has definitely, definitely been a while since I've, uh, I've daily vlogged or since I've yeah, regularly done videos so I thought I'd be a little bit more rusty than what I am but um the good news is I'm not <laughs> oh my car's so dirty I'm um, so I, I read some articles today uh, and yeah got some some good insights into into the market as I do every day and um, if you've heard of the Celsius network they're a lending platform um, Alex I don't want to say your last name because I don't want to butcher it the CEO I ended up meeting him in Vegas really really nice guy very knowledgeable and has been around the space for many many years he's um because I've been I've been sharing these like moonshot like BTC to go to 200k Citigroup saying 300k like these just what seem like astronomical numbers I think it's important to, to go the other way and be con contrarian and look at people uh, and, and what they have to say that are saying, you know, it could, it could go up, but it's probably it's probably not going to go up that fast or that, that high that quickly. So um, Alex is on the more conservative side. He's saying that we're going to see uh, kind of 30K BTC USD by uh, mid-2021. And... You know that's that's still a really really good number. That is um that means that there'll be a lot of outflow from BTC into the the large, mid, and small caps, which is uh, where a lot of the moon shots are, as you would already know. And um, yeah, because the, the general money flow is uh, in the whole crypto market. I'm not sure if I've shared this with you before. Is uh, Fiat is the first point of entry, and Fiat goes to BTC, and then people buy and hold BTC until it uh, until it moves, and then they start taking profits. And the whales are obviously taking profits, all, uh, and institutions are taking a lot um, earlier than what retail investors are. Um, and generally, the way the market moves is when 
retail investors are getting FOMO and starting to buy in, that's when the whales and institutions are actually selling out. Um, so they're an important part of the market cycle in order for those. Oh, I love this thing. <laughs> this car resistant. And then I look down and see what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, hmm. the brakes are working. So the money flow, the general money flow for BTC is fiat to BTC, and then it goes mid caps and uh, large caps, mid caps, and small caps. So whenever there's a large amount of profit made in BTC, it then moves into the altcoins, it moves into the large, mid, and small caps. So um, someone who's you know heavily invested in um, a lot of different positions that aren't BTC specific, um, I am waiting for the profits to, to come from from BTC so that they can uh, they can start to to move into the altcoins, which is really where I'll do well, where a lot of uh, my following and uh, a lot of my customers will do well. So um, yeah, I made it to the shop. I'm gonna head upstairs. I might actually give you a quick tour. It's so bright because it's uh, afternoon. The sun's right behind me, so I'm squinting squinting a bit. Um, and yes, you can see the baby seats in the back. <laughs> so I might give you a quick tour of the shop because it is not as full of cars as it was the other day and, uh, and then we'll head upstairs all right so here's the workshop um this is a project that we've i've personally been working on um we swapped this it's a, technically a super engine but it comes out of an arista in japan um we swapped this i bought this car relatively cheap it's a little bit dirty right now uh, but it's it is locked on that side. The interior is super, super clean, super nice. And um, it's a boost gauge and boost controller setup. So these come like non turbo standard, and uh, we put the turbo engine in it, which is uh, the same engine we have here. This is a uh, 3 litre, for those of you who don't know, 3 litre 2JZ VVTi GDE motor. Um, twin turbo um, it's the same motor I have in Larry and for those of you who have been following the channel for ages you know Larry is my personal drift car that I've had around for oh, probably six years now so this is 800 horsepower um, just fries the tires it's, it's a load of fun um, this is a, a project that we're going on where that motor over there is going to go in there and uh, that takes some time. This was uh, picked up quite cheaply. Super clean car. Man, that sounds intense today. And then, yeah, we've got parts and wheels and tires over there. And then um, I've got a BMW M2 2020 model. Super nice. Got no engine in it. Engine's down there. Um, this was actually in an accident. Uh, so it's been hit on that side, so no engine. And uh, yeah, it's my intention to turn that into a track car and start doing some, some group racing. So yeah, this is the workshop. And then you've got piles and piles and piles of, of parts, which we don't have a mezzanine for, for parts per se. So they get stacked in boxes. So uh, let's head upstairs. Okay, so just following on, so read a lot of really interesting articles today, one of them being that um, the three different themes that are different in 2020, that are different from the 2017 um, cryptocurrency market. So one of those has been uh, the top five coins, they've moved around in range apart from Bitcoin being first, Ethereum being second, but they're all still the same coins. Uh, whereas the, the second part of this is uh, the top 20 coins um, have moved significantly, with a lot of those taking losses of 70 to 90% of the value completely disappeared uh, off their uh, market caps, 
and it, it's forced them to go quite significantly down the ranks. And then finally is the institutional side of things. So uh, I talked about it in previous videos about Grayscale um, and, and the ability to be able to buy shares, shares per se, in Bitcoin and, and Ethereum using their trust, uh, as well as uh, other financial institutions and, and Wall Street that are getting involved in it. So um, according to the, the Lindy effect, uh, the life expectancy of some of these technologies is proportionate to their age. And the longer uh, their survival, the longer that they can be predicted to exist. So um, if that paradigm is applied to the same sector, um, one might conclude that the, the longer a cryptocurrency stays in the top 12, uh, the longer the probability it shall remain relevant for three years. So you can see that, and there's, there's thousands and thousands of coins that have died. There's actually a... Um, a website that tracks every single coin that's died up until this point and there's you know, thousands of, that have already died up to this point. Uh, the next thing that I read which I found really interesting was uh, that Bitcoin is officially arriving on Wall Street. Uh, the S&P and Dow Jones are launching a cryptocurrency index in 2021 uh, to track cryptocurrencies. I think it's going to be the top 500 or 550 coins that are going to appear in that new index. Uh, next year, and uh, Wall Street is going to be really tracking tracking this market. Uh, then the next one that I read was about Bitcoin price metrics, and one price metric that flashes uh, buy right now, and that's the hash ribbons. Uh, it actually tells investors to buy a BTC again for the first time in five months as the BTC price consolidates below twenty thousand dollars. So this is an elegant. I'll put the um, the image on the screen right now. An elegant Bitcoin uh, metric that predicted its run to $12,000 in August has flashed the bullish again, bullish signal again for the first time since July. And as noted by creator Charles Edwards on December 3rd, the hash ribbons indicator is now signaling for the buyers to enter the Bitcoin market. Hash ribbons post a rare blue dot. So um, uploading an uh, annotated chart to social media, Edwards, who is also the founder of digital asset manager uh, Capriol, noted similarities between Bitcoin now and before the previous bullish uptips throughout the year. Look what I found, a blue dot, he commented, <laughs> identifying the new entry point. So that's very, very interesting, and that, that correlates the, the hash power and the, and the uh, price movement of BTC overall. Uh, another article, another really bullish article, so Willy Woo, who's um, a commentator of, of cryptocurrency on Twitter and uh, various other different platforms is calling for a uh, $200,000 BTC uh, by December 2021, and he's saying that's conservative. So the BTC uh, price is likely to reach $300,000 in a year's time, the popular analyst says, thanks to this um, amplified bullish feedback loop. So sky high price predictions have come thick and fast over the course of the past two months, with quant analysts uh, Plan B's 100K. Uh, December 2021 estimate now looking decidedly um, modest. So beyond the technical circles, familiar figures such as serial investor Mike Novogratz has begun taking price predictions to the mainstream as well. And in uh, this case, he actually told actress uh, Maisie Williams last month that BTC was going to be headed towards $20,000 and then $65,000, uh, which we have subsequently invested. So uh, that, that's a more conservative side of things. And, and that's what I think is super important to be looking at here is whenever you're looking at, you know, where this could possibly go is to look at those, you know, bearish type predictions, those conservative type pr predictions. So we've got the the metric of net unrealized profit, lo profit loss. And this is a, a metric that is, or, or a signaling term that, that's used in charting. Um, which means that the bull run could, could go up to $590,000 in this bull run. Again, crazy, crazy numbers, um, but that is that is something you can look at. I'll actually put the link below. We've got the Celsius CEO, Alex um, Mashinsky, hopefully I'm not butchering his name, and he's basically saying his price predictions are, are much, much lower uh, and, and more in the you know realistic side of things. So he's saying that Google searches for BTC appear to be far less popular today than they were when the asset um, achieved its previous all-time highs in December 2017. And that's kind of a good thing. Um, the price is moving where it is, and yet the searches are still quite low. 
So, uh, 2017 was all about hype for the first time users jumping in to try and catch BTC because of FOMO. FOMO being fear of missing out. Um, and this time it's different, he noted. The fact that almost no one is searching for BTC, um, re referencing the Google Trends. And is this is telling you that everyone already knows what it is and where to buy it, i.e. the Cash App, PayPal, or different exchange accounts. So, BTC's gained mainstream adoption in a number of areas this year, including PayPal launching its cryptocurrency services on the platform and bolstering public awareness of the industry. And after multiple years on a range-bound price roller coaster, um, Mashinsky has said that crypto has begun, begun its current macro uptrend uh, around the same time COVID-19 came on the scene. So it's really interesting. If you zoom out for a second and start to look at uh, traditional markets, everything that's going on in the world with uh, COVID-19, lockdowns, businesses hurting, people hurting. Um, it's really interesting to see how, you know, the money printers are being turned on, stimulus is happening worldwide. I know in Australia, they're, they're starting to uh, loosen a lot of restrictions on, on lending to, to in, encourage people to be, spend more money, to encourage people to buy more property, um, to, pull, to pull money out of the bank and use it to uh, to purchase different things. There's all these different stimuluses that are going on, and I'm sure it's happening the same in, in your countries as well. Um, it's super hot in here, even with the air conditioning on today. It's a typical Australian summer. So, um, as always, I've really enjoyed making this video for you. And if you have any questions or anything specifically you wanna ask, um, simply leave a comment down below. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, I run a, a newsletter and education program called Keys, Keys to Freedom. Uh, we're in the 40th edition of this uh, of this great newsletter, um, where we've had gains from 100% you know, to 200% to 300% ROIs in a short amount of time, all the way up to the 2,000 and 2,500 percent ROIs. If that's something you're interested in, there'll be a link under this video where you can go and watch a, a webinar and learn some more about that. That's pretty much it for me. I'll see you tomorrow.